How did a French majority affect Canada East? So have you ever wondered why French is the official language of the province of Quebec? In the 1800s, a majority of the population of Canada East was made up of French speakers called Canadiens, like the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens were descendants of the early French settlers of New France. Most were Catholic and belonged to the working class. English businessmen dominated the economies of Montreal and Quebec City. The mid-1800s were a time of prosperity for many business people, but the working class earned low wages and did not share in this prosperity. Examine the illustration in figure 1.10, which shows the start of construction of a new Catholic cathedral in Montreal in 1870. The Bishop of Montreal chose to build the cathedral in the heart of the English speaking and Protestant area of the city. Why do you think the bishop chose to build the cathedral in this location? Seigneurs and land ownership. Wealthy landowners who rented out smaller plots of land to Canadian Canadian farmers were known as seigneurs. Seigneurs are landowner who owned large areas of land and lent small parcels to farmers for their use. The Papineaux, the Papineaux were seniors that owned a huge amount of land, 178,000 acres on the Ottawa River. The town of Papineauville was named after them, as well as a whole region of Quebec called Papineau. Louis-Joseph Papineau was an important politician in the 1800s and was a key figure in Lower, Canada's, in Lower Canada rebellions in 1837. The Papineaux sold and rented land to thousands of other Canadians. Sawmills were the main business, and they also profited from owning large commercial farms. Many Canadian farmers rented land from the Papineaux or bought it on credit, but could not make their regular payments. As a result, they had to give up their plots of land or sell them back to the Papineaux for a small part of what they had paid. The story of the Papineaux provides an example of society in Canada East in the mid-1800s, the story of a few wealthy Canadians like the Papineaux, and the experience of the many working-class Canadians. Abandoning farm life. When the parents in a farming family died, the land of the farm, of the, the land they farmed, was divided among their children. So the plots of land became smaller and smaller over the years. And after several generations, these small farms could hardly produce enough food to support the farming families. So when farming could not support their families, Canadians turned to other ways to make money. And often the men in the families would go after jobs in the lumber industry. As thousands of desperate men completed the, for, competed for the lumbering jobs, business owners found that they could hire them for very low wages, and soon the Canadians had to borrow money to feed their families. Many could not pay back these debts. Read the excerpt from a letter from Louis Joseph Papineau in figure 1.11 describing the situation of his tenant farmers who had borrowed money. What does this excerpt reveal about the situation of many farmers in Canada East in the mid 1800s. We'll threaten court action and we'll sue few people, but in such a new area, there is really so much poverty that I feel more repugnance, intense disgust, in suing them than they do in repaying. Lack of foresight, ability to predict, ignorance, the tendency to become indebted to the merchants are the common failings of all habitants without exception. Canadian Canadian migration. So since many of the Canadians could not earn enough money to pay their debt, hundreds of thousands were forced to give up their farms and move to the city to find work. And this was a huge transition and change. So in the 1800s, only 5% of the population of Canada East lived in cities. And then by 1867, 20% of the population lived in cities. Also, many of them left to work in the United States. Read the translated excerpt in figure 1.112 from Patrice Lacombe's novel, The Ancestral Farm. In the work, this work of fiction, he gives an accurate depiction, description 
of the Canadian migration to the cities. How would the trend described in this excerpt affect the number of jobs available in the cities? After seeing himself completely ruined, Chauvin finally decided to come and seek shelter in the city. In doing so, he followed this example of other farmers, driven from their lands by poor harvests and drawn in the city in the hope of earning a living. They arrived in droves, almost doubling the population of our suburbs. The development of French nationalism. So when the Act of Union joined Upper Canada and Lower Canada into one colony called the Province of Canada in 1840, the new colony's government was dominated by English politicians. They wanted to assimilate the French people, despite the fact that the majority of the population of Canada East was French. So what assimilate means is pretty much take all of your differences and make you like them. So the English politicians wanted all the French people to just adapt and conform and basically become all the same. We wanted them to take the same attitudes and speak English and not really recognize their French culture. Many Canadians fought back against this attempt to assimilate them into English culture. French nationalism was an effort by Canadian leaders to create a national identity and protect and to protect French language, religion, and cultures. Nationalism is a belief that people with a common language, land, history, and culture should be an independent nation. So it's a, desi it's a desire for people sharing a common culture, language, and history to form an independent nation. So it's that idea that the French want to be separate from the rest of Canada. They want to be their own country. And as you learn more about Canadian history, that has been an ongoing trend where there was a separatist movement and Quebec does want certain parts of Quebec, certain people in Quebec do want to separate from the rest of Canada. And it's been an ongoing part of that history. So some governors such as Lord Metcalf, 1843 to 1845 and Lord Elgin favored abandoning assimilation, assimilation, assimilation. Instead, they supported the Canadians keeping their culture. Read the quote from Lord Metcalf. If the Canadians are to be ruled to their satisfaction, every attempt to metamorphose change them systematically into English must be abandoned. Why does Metcalf think assimilation should be abandoned? Well, maybe it's perhaps they don't want to have a civil war like the Americans. Um, who knows? Several different groups of Canadian leaders promoted Canadian nationalism. For example, the Papineaus wanted to keep the French seigneurial, seigneurial system, that farming system that we just learned about, when it was abolished in 1854. They, they criticized the British governor. They claimed that this was a way for the English to destroy their French heritage. The role of the Catholic Church in promoting Canadian identity. Catholic bishops and priests traveled to cities and rural communities throughout British North America. They spoke publicly about the importance of the French language. They gained political influence and encouraged Canadians to be leaders of Catholicism in the Americas. Read figure 1.18, a passage from an article by Louis-Francois Laflèche, the Bishop of Trois-Rivières, why do you think Bishop Laflèche would promote Canadian nationali nationalism? The real meaning of the word patriotism. It is the love of our country, of the ground where our ancestors' ashes lie. It is the unbreakable attachment to the language of our mother, to the faith of our fathers. It is respect for our institutions and our laws. Whoever has these sentiments deeply engraved on his or her heart is a true patriot. So what Francois is saying here is that you really have to embrace your culture and your past. So these people have French backgrounds. They're coming from France. A lot of the, their culture and their background is French. So they're saying embrace that religious background 
their French language, basically who they are. They're saying, let's, this is, we are Canadians and we're proud of it. So how does Quebec, how does Quebec's official language today show the importance of Canadian nationalism? Well, it's, it's the official language in Quebec. It's their first language. Uh, and if you've ever been to Quebec City or Montreal, you will definitely see this in the city, uh, especially in some parts of, of Montreal and Quebec City. You'll get that sense of uh, French Canadian nationalism or French Canadian um, identity. Okay. Uh, church leaders were also taking advantage of the new industries. They invested the church's wealth in railways, mining, and lumber. Figure 1.19, so this picture right here, shows the modern day part of campus of Laval University in Quebec City. So as you can see, just from the architecture, it's different. Um, the first French language university in British North America. What evidence can you see of the origins of the university? Well, if you look right up at the top there, there's that cross. So it's showing the Catholicism aspect of the French, uh, French identity. Um, so it shows the original campus of Laval University, which the church founded in 1852 with this new income. How would projects like this increase the church's role in Canadian, Canadian society? the rise of Canadian artists. In the mid 1800s, there was a growing French speaking middle class in Canada East. This small class embraced Canadian literature, literature and arts writers such as Francois Xavier Garneau and Philippe Joseph Aubert de Gasp made Canadian history and stories popular. They created stories about Canadian heroes such as Joseph Montferrand. Montferrand was a lumberjack famed for physically defending fellow Canadians against British bullies. Look at the Canadian stamp just to the right here that shows Montferrand. Why would he be a popular subject to this day for writers and artists creating a Canadian identity? These stories about Canadian heroes influenced other Canadian artists who wrote novels, plays, and po poems about them. They reminded the Canadians that they had a history and culture long before the British conquered New France. How do you think such artists influenced Canadians during a time when Canada East was still a British colony? 